Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing about how to create multiple threads by extending the thread class. And we'll be discussing about the example programs and how to deal with the multiple threads and how to manage multiple threads also. So this is the second approach. First approach is actually we can create a thread, multiple threads using runnable interface. So this is another approach called creating a threads by extending a thread class. So uh, there is a thread class in Java package, uh, the Java predefined Java package. There is no need to import any package. So predefined thread class is there. So using this thread class, we can create a one more new class by using inheritance concept. So that is actually we have to create a subclass uh, by extending from thread class, right? And uh, before that, we should understand that the thread class is already implemented implementing the runnable interface this particular thread class okay so already it is implementing a runnable interface so when you create a subclass we are actually extending from thread class and we are implementing from runnable interface why because thread class by default it is implementing runnable interface right so the run method is run method is already implemented by run thread class since it is implementing runnable interface so we have to override the run method to write our own task okay so how to write our thread class task is we have to override the run method uh, in thread class when you are creating a subclass okay so run method is actually the main method which is also called as entry point for the new thread so once uh, we done that we can create that object for that class that object we have to call start method okay so start method is important to make the thread to move the thread from a new state to runnable state here you can see one example program how to create a thread using a thread class so here we have to use a class keyword create a new class name any name you can use for this uh, class and you have to use extends thread class and remember this in this thread class is already implementing runnable interface and this thread class is overriding that run method right so uh, this run method we have to overwrite okay so we have to use public void run and we have to write the logic for the thread now let's see how to create a thread okay so to create a thread is just to create an object for this class okay just you have to create an object for this class my thread t1 equal to new my thread so now the thread is created and it will be in a new state okay the thread is in a new state and from this new state we can make the thread to runnable state so to make the thread to runnable state we have to call the start method okay so the from new thread new state to runnable state we have to uh, activate the thread so for that you have to call this function t1 dot start method okay got it so this is about the example how to create a th thread using a thread class by extending a thread class so now i'll show you one example using eclipse id how to create multiple threads by using this this topic this particular technique by extending a thread class so in eclipse id create a project java project so for example here i have a sample project inside sample project i'll create one example program to demonstrate the multi threading so example to include the main method public static void main method finish so now uh, here let's see how we can create a threads using a by extending a thread class so first we need to create one class my thread extends thread class so inside to write the logic of a thread we, we need to override public void run function override the public void run function so inside this only we have to write the logic okay so for example uh, thread logic here goes here okay so whatever ta task you want to perform you have to write inside a run function okay now let's see how to create a thread so creating a thread is very simple create thread object okay so to create a thread object we have to take this class name look at this class uh, this class inheritance relationship if you think about inheritance you can understand if you create a subclass of this particular thread class this class also becomes a thread class 
okay this class also becomes a thread class so if you create object for this class you are creating object for a thread class only okay you are creating that object itself a thread okay so we can uh, treat that object as a thread so t1 is equal to new my thread and if you want to assign name for the thread you can use set name method and you can put some name for this thread right so here uh, like for example i want to start the thread right so after setting a name the very important thing is this is actually mandatory otherwise it is not a thread the thread will not be started okay this start method is mandatory for activating a thread from new state to runnable state okay so like this we can create only one thread so now we have created only one thread just there. Yes, there is uh, one uh, mistake there because uh, my thread class I have created in another class. So we just will remove, uh, we'll just put this new thread. Okay. The class name I'll change it to new thread. So uh, if I change the class name to new thread, we'll, we have to change this class name. The error because of already I have created my thread class in the same project. So that is why the error is coming. Okay. Right, so now it's there is no error. Okay, so there is no error. We can execute the program. Yes, you are getting the output now. Look at this. The thread log logic goes here. The message is coming. Right. So how it is uh, how it is working? When you create object t1, uh, the thread will in thread is in this new state, and when you call start method, it will be activated and it will wait for the CPU. When the when the thread gets for a chance for execution, it will call the run method. Run method will be automatically called. Okay, so it will execute the task. Okay, so if you want to give different tasks, uh, this is for actually one thread, right? So if you want to give a, uh, if you want to create multiple threads, so that is the objective of this video, right? So how to create multiple threads using a uh, by extending a thread class? Okay. So to create a uh, one more thread, just you have to repeat the process. Okay, you have to copy this code and create another thread object t1, t say t2, change the object variable t2, t2, t2. Okay, and give a different name also t2. Okay, got it? Right. So uh, now you will be getting a, a multi two threads. Right? How many threads is we are creating? We are creating t2, t1, and t2. Okay. So we can give a different task also. For this t1 t2 we can give a different task so in order to do that first we need inside this run method we have to uh, access the name of the thread so name of the thread you can access by using thread dot current thread dot current thread function then put yeah, one more function you have to call get name method so this function will give uh, name of the current running thread so based on this name we can give a different task you can use switch case or you can use if uh, if else case also you can write so here i'll just uh, demonstrate a switch case so we can put a switch case also switch the name is a uh, uh, the name whatever the name of the thread is t1 okay the name of the thread is t1 case t1 okay so we can Okay, we can write the logic here. Okay, uh, if the name of thread is T1, we can display some data, right? For example, assume that uh, here I will demonstrate one uh, one logic. Okay, the T1 thread uh, assume that I want output like this. The T1 thread want to print. T1 thread should print odd numbers from one to five, uh, one to ten. Okay, odd numbers. The T1 thread the role is it should print odd numbers from one to ten. And T2 thread should print even numbers from 1 to 10. So that two different tasks I'm giving. Okay. So uh, 1 to 10, we can create one for loop i equal to 1, i less than equal to 10, i plus plus. Okay. So we can create a for loop. Right. So we can create a for loop. Inside for loop, uh, we can check, take the i value and divide it by. <coughs> We can check the i value and we can uh, divide do the modular division by 2 if it is not equal to 0 it is odd value right so you can print the value 
okay so you can print otherwise i think this break bracket is not needed so just you can write the statement system dot out dot println <coughs> okay so here uh, while, while printing we, to understand we can display the name also for example name of the thread <coughs> we can display uh, we should know that which thread is telling uh, odd number dot right so we can display the name like this t1 thread is printing the odd number okay it will print the odd number okay <coughs> like this odd okay so t1 thread is printing odd number so t1 i1 odd will get output like this okay so after that if you want to make the thread to wait for some time uh, some time for example if you want uh, provide a delay you can use a sleep function okay so here you can dis after displaying this uh, you can put a try block thread dot sleep so one second or two second you can use okay let's just uh, assume that two second okay let's let's find out uh, what what is the output so here you can put the exception class or you can create a interrupted exception also okay right so uh, after doing everything this for loop will take care of everything right so after doing everything the case you have to close so using a break statement you have to close the case okay now we have to write the logic for t2 t2 uh, inside t2 also we have to uh, do the same thing only okay so with, uh, with some small changes okay right now look at this uh, we have a two threads so uh, if the t1 if t1 uh, if the name is t1 it will execute this task the name of the thread is t2 it will execute this task okay so uh, first t1 thread should print odd number t2 thread should print even number right so just you have to put equal to zero right i uh, modular division to equal to zero so and you have here you have to change it is a even okay right so uh, i have uh, suspended the thread for two seconds okay so this is how we can write multiple thread we can create multiple thread so creating multiple thread is two objects you have to create for the class for the which class this this class okay new thread class okay so two new thread i'm creating uh, one is t1 and t2 so uh, this name we can access in the run function by using thread dot current thread dot get name and you can pass the name to the switch case so when the case is t1 we can execute the task printing odd numbers okay printing odd numbers and when the thread is t2 we can print even numbers okay so now uh, everything is done we can execute the program now look at this output you can see the t1 thread is printing uh, odd numbers 1 3 5 then it will go for 7 and it will go for 9 but uh, the meanwhile you can see that t2 thread is been printing even number 2 4 6 8 10 okay so clear and finally it is waiting right see see that finally uh, the program is waiting so in order to do that control that we have to use join function so join function is where uh, mandatory so join function you have to call in the main method okay so join function also throw exceptions so join function we can call it in the main function to wait for the uh, t1 and t2 so you can call t1 and t1 dot join and t2 dot join so this join function is what is the use of purpose of join method is to make one thread to wait for another thread so for example here the main thread is waiting for the child threads new threads okay so here if any exception comes we can print it so remember this uh, uh, here you have to understand this join method throws exception so uh, we have to use try catch block so after this we can write uh, the program completed successfully okay program completed okay otherwise the main thread will complete will be completing before the uh, new threads okay so in order to avoid that we can call uh, join method to uh, to postpone the main thread execution to postpone the main thread execution till the new t1 and t2 should come uh, t1 t2 process uh, is actually getting completed okay so we can postpone the uh, main thread completion okay so now uh, if i run the program you can see the effect of uh, join method 
now look at this uh, the program completed message is not coming right so it is waiting uh, the main thread is waiting for t1 and t2 to complete okay so you'll get that t1 is printing odd number t2 is printing even number and all the process is done you finally will be getting the program completed message look at this program completed successfully normally okay so when you do multi threading concept multi threading when you create multiple threads you you must uh, create you must use join function to make the main thread to wait for uh, all child thread all child threads the new threads that you have created okay so this is a, uh, this way we can create multiple threads using uh, by extending a thread class right 